wonderful turnout tonight. Uh, this is a great project, and we're looking forward, we're going to explain it all to you here in a second. My name is Cheryl Moon Sirianni. I'm the district executive for Pendock District 11. Um, and we have some great people here that have been working on this project, uh, working collectively for a while now. I want to introduce them. Um, please stand up when I introduce your name. So Doug Seeley, he's the assistant uh, district executive for design. Jason Zang is the assistant district executive for uh, the acting district executive for uh, construction. Um, Zach Kamakar sitting over here. He's the project manager. Todd Kravitz. Todd, hi again. Todd sitting over there. He's a traffic engineer. Um, David Conrad is our uh, acting utility administrator, and uh, Tyler Mercer is our, uh, our assistant environmental manager. Uh, and then with McCormick Taylor, who are our uh, consultant engineers, or design engineers on the project, we have uh, John Tola and uh, John Seda, and, right? and Jen Treats, who's uh, sitting over here uh, running the, the presentation. So they're all going to be here afterwards uh, to answer questions. I think this crowd's a little bit too big to be taking a lot of general questions. I think we're going to uh, ask people after we're done to come to the... Uh, find one of our people. They'll be stationed in the back to ask your particular questions. I think that'll uh, make this meeting maybe go a little bit smoother. So uh, um, we are going to go through a presentation here. Uh, we are going to ask you to hold questions until after the presentation. It's not very long, maybe 20 minutes. Uh, John's going to go into uh, Zach and John are going to go into a lot of details. So uh, just hold tight. We're going to talk a little bit about the project background, give you an overview, uh, explain the traffic data and why we're actually doing a project. Talk a little bit about the hydraulic analysis and why we have to do what we have to do to the, the bridge there over Chartier's Creek. Um, we're going to talk uh, briefly about the environmental assessment. We're going to go into detail about what the proposed improvements are and uh, talk about how we're looking to construct this as, uh, with as minimal impact to you all in, in the traveling public as possible. Then a little bit about the schedule and like I said, then we'll take the questions and answers. For those of you that don't know what you might be here for, we're here to talk about the Chartier's Creek uh, uh, improvement, Char Chartier Street uh, Route 50 improvement project. So that's that's what the project is. Zach's going to go in and explain a little bit more in the details of uh, the area. It's not a very long area, but I think it's going to have a big impact and a lot of uh, great improvements to the area. And before we go further, I do want to note um, that we know there's a lot of needs in this area. There's a lot of traffic that comes through with Bridgeville. Uh, we, we do have some other projects that we're studying. Uh, we are studying uh, what we can do maybe at the Bridgeville Interchange itself. Um, it's a very congested, uh, compact interchange, so there's not a lot you can do there. But we do have a study going on trying to see how we can mitigate some of the traffic concerns you have. We don't have that project funded yet, but we do have a study. And we're also working um, with uh, the, to the Turnpike Commission. is actually going to be wide in 79, and we're actually working uh, another study to see what we can do to, to hook on to maybe their, where their water is going to occur. So those projects are, are, are separate from this project. Uh, there are studies that are happening. The project we're going to talk about today is basically just at the one intersection. But just note that we, we aren't uh, ignorant to some of the other uh, concerns in the area and that we are uh, looking at them. And we'll take any comments on your comment forms that have to do with that. But just, that's not the purpose of today's meeting is. So anyhow, um, the project was actually initiated by uh, the Route 50 Task Force, and we're very uh, glad they did because uh, by, by their virtue of their partnership is actually how the project got funded uh, with, uh, through Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission. Uh, it's funded with federal and state uh, funds, but there's a whole lot of other funds that are involved in this. Um, but the partnership is actually between Allegheny County, you can read up there, Bridgeville, Collier Township, the developer, uh, formerly Newberry, uh, uh, Senator Rettenfaller, uh, Representative Ortide, uh, SPC, South Fayette, and Amber St. Clair. Uh, South Fayette and uh, Bridgeville are actually giving financial contributions to the project also, so that's helping the project advance. Along with all of these um, communities have put in for uh, d d um, different types of state funds like Green Light Go and uh, some of the state initiated uh, department of uh, DCED funds for some of the development. So there's a whole lot of funds that are being compiled to, for this project, and that's why this project is actually moving forward. So uh, the, the task force did develop some concepts. We took those concepts, which were very good, and refined them to what we're going to see today. Uh, I mentioned the shared funding. 
We're in preliminary engineering, and after this meeting, uh, we'll be able to obtain the environmental document that allows us to move into final design and, and start some of the right-of-way process. Right-of-way process here is very minimal. Um, that's what's great about this project. You, we get a, a good bang for the project with very little impact to the uh, right-of-way here. So we're, um, that, that allows the project to move forward a lot quicker, too. And then we've had multiple status meetings with the task force and the, the boroughs. So um, with that being said, uh, Zach's going to start the uh, presentation, the actual technical part. And like I said, please hold uh, questions till afterwards. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, I'm Zach Kamdekar. I'm the project manager uh, for this project uh, for Pendant District 11. Um, I'm just going to go quickly over uh, the limits of work on the project. Uh, as Cheryl mentioned, uh, the scope on this project was pretty tight. And uh, as you can see on the screen, it included Chartier Street um, up until the railroad structure, um, the intersection with SR50 and Church Street and Chartier Street, uh, the bridge itself over Chartier's Creek, and uh, stopping on the eastern side of the intersection of Washington Pike and Miller's Run Road. Um, the project did include improvements um, to the SR79 northbound on-ramp. Um, so as Cheryl mentioned, the project was just focused uh, to, this, to this area exactly. Um, and as you can see, as you all know, being residents, um, there's a lot, there was a lot of constraints for the project. Obviously the businesses, the church, um, but the biggest constraint we had with the project was uh, the Chartier's Creek itself. Um, John will go into more detail as to the hydraulic analysis we had to do uh, in terms of the, the structure in the creek. Um, so, so now I'd like to introduce John Petula from McCormick Taylor, uh, who is our prime design consultant uh, for the project. Thank you, Zach and Cheryl. It's good to see such a large group of people coming out to uh, hear about the project, and especially on a Penguins hockey night. I see some of the jerseys and hats, and we promise to get you out before the puck drop, so no need to worry about that. Uh, we are excited about the project, and a couple of things that you can do to help us to know a little more about the project, and so we can address or at least know about your concerns. As you came in, as Cheryl mentioned, this, everybody should have received the comment form. If you didn't, we have them on the front desk. If you could take time either tonight before you leave, turn them in, or uh, during the hockey game or some other time, you can, there's an address there, and mail them back to us. It really does help us. And uh, uh, PennDOT is a project team to understand people's concerns or any questions, and we'll certainly follow up with you. And the second thing is, like Cheryl mentioned, after this presentation, if you do have questions, we want to make sure, now's really the time to ask them. If you're not unsure about something that I talked about or Cheryl talked about or Zach, please see a project team member after the presentation. We'll be happy to talk to you specifically and address any concerns and talk in more detail about any number of uh, aspects of the project. So with that being said, uh, what uh, PennDOT does for any type of project in any environmental document, we look at the project needs. Because as I was always told, the PennDOT projects, they look at, at the projects in a smart way. If there isn't a transportation need, there's limited transportation dollars. There shouldn't be a project. This project certainly has a whole host of different needs that we're addressing as a project team. The first need is, I think a number of you are aware, is congestion within the area. Chartier Street, Route 50, Washington Pike, uh, Washington Avenue, and then leading up to 79, as we'll see in a couple minutes as I go over the traffic data. There are a lot of traffic uh, currently making the movement, and with development in the future, it's anticipated to grow from there. So the congestion that we're seeing today is only going to get worse as there is pressure from development and growth, which is good. The Pendant wants to support, especially the economy and jobs. But doing it in a smart way, they can uh, maximize the investment in the infrastructure in this area. As Cheryl said, there's a number of other uh, infrastructure improvements that they want to look at, too. So it's something that Pendant is mindful of and makes targeted correct improvements that improves the project area. The second thing, some of you may uh, know this, the bridge over Chartier's Creek, the superstructure, not the what's called the abutment, the foundation, is currently structurally deficient. There isn't any type of concern on driving on the bridge now or really in the foreseeable future, but with this project, as we look to widen and replace the bridge, the superstructure is something we can take care of now with the project and not have to worry about it in another 10 or 15 years and have more disruption and more cost in terms of uh, improvements that would have to happen then. So we're looking at taking care of the superstructure of the bridge along with the improvements and widening the bridge that I'll talk about 
in a moment. And again, some safety concerns. Really, we're not seeing high fatalities that you've seen on the interstate or high speed roadways, but we are seeing a lot of angle collisions or fender benders and a lot of costs to people that are uh, involved in the accidents, emergency responders, and a lot of, uh, I think, tie-ups to traffic that result from the congestion and areas that we can improve with this project that will increase safety, alleviate the congestion, and the other need of the structurally efficient bridge. So moving on, right now we're finishing up preliminary engineering. We're finishing our data collection, which is uh, traffic data, our hydraulic analysis, which is a uh, fairly detailed hydraulic analysis considering Chartier's Creek, and our environmental studies, our environmental document that incorporates the project needs and the improvements, and even the feedback that we'll get today will be something we'll be working on in the upcoming months. And we'll be talking about it, as you may be seen as you come in, we've refined some of the concepts, a lot of the good work, the Route 50 task force has started, we've refined and we've engineered improvements that's uh, looking at the specific site concerns, making it more constructible, and addressing any of the environmental constraints, in particular the hydraulics. So moving on, this is just more statistics so you can see what types of traffic volumes that we're looking at. This is what's called the average daily traffic. It's the amount of traffic that moves through the project area on a daily basis. You can see, we not only look at what's the traffic like today, we want to look at the future traffic too with our partners with the SPC who help us project growth because they know the growth in the project area. Bridgeville, South Bay, they're contributors to growth, but so is Upper St. Clair, Peters Township. Collier, other people that drive through the area. So we wanted to look regionally at what the growth is going to be in the future because we want to address the future traffic. We don't want to build it and say, okay, we address any traffic that's out there today. We want to look and make sure it's going to be able to withstand future growth and development in the future. So that's why we look 20 years out to the future and with the developments that's there, with influence from the uh, Southern Beltway, what type of traffic volumes are we going to be dealing with? And that's what we're addressing with this project. So you can see there's some modest growth in this area with about 25,000 cars on Route 50, 9,000 on Chartier Street. That's projected to go up to rounding up about 28,000 and 10,000 on Chartier Street. Here's our existing traffic. And what I've highlighted, if uh, I apologize if you can't see this that well in the back, but looking on the right of Chartier Street uh, and the blue dot that's kind of at the top right hand corner of the street, that's Church Street. Washington, or, uh, Washington Avenue and Chartier Street. The second dot down is, I guess, at the bottom, or the one that's more to the bottom of the screen. That's the driveway to uh, the Aldi's, um, Starbucks, Chipotle, and Washington Pike. And just up from that to the left is, uh, it's not pop time, is it? <laughs> uh, well, just to keep going, uh, some of the movements that we highlighted I don't know where we start. Are the uh, movements that most of the traffic during the peak hour, and these are looking at peak hour volumes, are taking. Um, on Chartier Street, we've noticed the movement's very heavy, and there's backups making the left hand turn as you're heading towards Washington Pike and Interstate 79. We've also noticed the same as you're going towards South Fayette and Miller's Run, making that right turn. We're looking at in the morning over, and this is just the peak hour, over a thousand cars are making that right hand turn. It's heading towards Miller, Miller's Run and Interstate 79. And a lot of that traffic in the morning is heading on the 79 northbound ramp. Over 900 of those thousand cars are making that movement. So why I'm giving this as background information, it's important to understand to looking at where we're trying to address the congestion, make the improvements, to make the best investment to improve the project. <laughs> and again, on uh, heading back the other way in the AM and PM, coming from Interstate 79, making that left, as a lot of you know it, from South Bay, heading towards Bridgeville. That's another very heavy movement. This is just the future traffic. This is really just to show that we did look at the uh, 2040 traffic peak hour volumes, and there's growth there too. You can see there's over uh, 1,000 cars on the 79 ramp now compared to the 900 in that movement just gets heavier. It's uh, almost 1,200 cars that will be making that right-hand turn from Washington Avenue onto Miller's Run. Okay, here's a table. It can look a little complex, but what we try to do here is in the future year, I think everybody can kind of appreciate the length of the backup. The traffic will be what we call, in traffic terms, queuing on Route 50 
and Chartier Street. And you can see what we wanted to do is alleviate those backups because that's alleviating congestion. If you're backed up a thousand feet from the traffic signal, if we can make improvements, <coughs> cutting that in half or making the uh, congestion alleviated a lot better, people are moving through that area a lot better and they're tied up less, less delays, better travel time. So we wanted to show in terms of what does that mean? What's going to be out there if we make no improvements in the future? and what the reduction is with our improvements in the 2040 years. So you can see, just on Chartier Street alone, where you cut that queuing length that if we made no improvements by adding a left turn lane in half. So with the queue reduction of looking at adding a left turn lane on Chartier Street, we're alleviating a lot of that congestion. It's similar on Route 50. Uh, the major movements were cutting almost 50%. Uh, quarter percent. You will see one negative number up there, but that's in the hand, and that's Route 50 eastbound. The reason that queue gets a little longer is the timing of the signal. We're giving a little more time to the major movement. The, the queue in the other direction, which is a minor movement, grows a little bit, but it's a little bit on a small number. So that's why that goes up slightly in the uh, peak hour in the hand, the non-heavy direction. All right, the hydraulic analysis. Uh, well, this is really one of the tri tricky uh, concerns in the project area. And I think I talked about this before, but who, who out there, maybe by a show of hands, is familiar with the project in the 70s, actually the 60s and the 80s, the James G. Fulton project? I think, wow, a lot of you. And you can probably appreciate the investment. That it was about 10 miles of creek, I think about 59,000 linear feet. Chartier's Creek, an investment in the 1970s of $30 million by the federal government. They understood there was a problem, and by legislation, they did something about it. And they put the money to fund it. There was local funds, and I think the Chartier's Valley Flood Authority, as a result, was formed to look to protect the investment. So, one of the things that's really important for PennDOT and uh, to have a minimal effect on the community and to be a good partner and a good neighbor is to look at this. And the Army Corps of Engineers mandates that we look at this, that we don't increase the risk of flooding up and downstream. We don't increase the what we call the 100-year water surface. And the velocities, the risk of flooding is the same after the project as it is before the project. Now, that's somewhat tricky when you're adding lanes to a bridge because that's looked as an obstruction. It's a four-lane bridge right now. The proposed plans make it seven lanes. But what we did is we engineered a bridge that wasn't as deep as it is today. If you look out there today, the beams are fairly deep, maybe they were four feet. We're maybe cutting that in half with the new improved bridge and replacing the superstructure. And we looked at complex hydraulic models before to look at the flow and the flow rate and the velocity and after. And we made sure it was something important to us and the project team and something the Army Corps of Engineers that's looking to protect that $30 million investment mandates that there isn't any type of uh, ad adverse condition after the bridge is constructed. So moving on to the next slide. Here are some statistics. Just our project area alone, the drainage area is about 165 square miles. And the flow rate is uh, almost about 18,600 cubic feet per second, which is a lot of flood to manage. But one thing, I just want to restate this because I think it's very important that everybody knows this, that uh, the project is not going to do. The project will not create uh, any adverse impacts to the water quality, the stream flow, fish, wildlife, and I think most importantly, or one of the important elements, up and down stream property. So that's something that we really take seriously and we make sure that PennDOT is being good. Just a couple of historic resources that we noted as a project team, the Bethany Presbyterian Church, that we're not impacting. Uh, we're looking maybe reconstructing part of the sidewalk exactly where it is today as part of the project, but there won't be any impacts to it. And then another uh, eligible resource is the Chartiers Railway, which is just to the north of our uh, project area in the Chartiers. Here's our proposed improvements, and you can see we have a board in the back too that reflects these two. First on Chartier Street, really what we're doing is adding, uh, as you can see in the middle, uh, near the double yellow line, uh, an exclusive left turn lane that will take you on to Route 50, heading, uh, I guess, westbound or south towards Washington Pike. Then the lane that's out there today, you'll be able to make that left turn lane like you do today, 
go straight to Church Street, it was the church and make the right. So we're not really proposing any changes there. But because of that heavy volume that's taking the left hand turn, we're improving that approach on Chartier Street. <coughs> the bridge, again, there's a board back here that shows both of these. Uh, really, uh, the main improvements are addressing the, the primary needs, where you can see looking to the right of the screen, we're adding an exclusive right hand turn on the Chartier Street. So now it won't be a shared right and through but an actual exclusive right for people who are making a left turn coming from Miller's Run onto Washington Avenue, they can now go into an exclusive right turn lane on the Chartier Street. And one thing that we're doing, and I talked to a couple of other people about it, right now it's what we call a pretty tight radius as you're making that right turn. And I think people have to slow down and almost stop to make that turn from uh, Route 50 on the Chartier Street. We're flattening that out to the point that it will be a lot easier for people to make that right hand turn on the Chartier Street. The two through lanes that are out there today going to Bridgeville will stay the exact same way that they are today. Uh, the crossings of South Bayette and the Aldi's, the Chipotle and the Starbucks's will be an exclusive left turn lane there. The through lane will be like it is today to Washington Pike and similar as you're heading from the right to the left. There will be a lane that you can head, stay on 50 and get on Interstate 79 almost like you can today. The addition where we saw the heavy movement and what we're trying to address is a lane to the outside, the far left. That's going to be a lane that's not going to be involved with the signal that builders run in Washington Pike. It'll be an exclusive lane that'll go straight through and onto the interstate. So as soon as you make that left hand turn from Chartier Street, the next place that you'll end up is on Interstate 79 northbound. So we feel that that's a movement. If you can take all those cars, we're talking about a thousand cars in the future. Out of that signal, that signal will operate a lot better. We'll be able to put timing to, uh, I think, other movements in need. If you could just go back, Jen, just two slides. One thing I wanted to mention, uh, one more. On Chartier Street, we were talking about this before. Uh, a lot of you, I'm sure, are familiar with Chartier Street. And uh, being proactive, and they're aware of a couple areas where there's been movement, some slight movement in the pavement, and some issues with the embankment. So part of this project, uh, we, we don't think that it can wait to go with this project, but to have kind of an economy of scale and being proactive, the drilling program is going to look at doing the geotechnical testing in three or four areas that could potentially be slide prone and do the lab analysis so PennDOT can come up with the correct repairs or the correct ways to address those areas so they don't become an issue. Because I know, just talking to some of you uh, tonight, BJ, we spoke about this, living on Chartier Street is something that's a concern. I think when that is a concern and the project team looked at it too, it's something that PennDOT wants to be proactive and address. It's not going to be part of this project, but because we were doing geotechnical testing and drilling as part of this project anyway, we wanted to expand that to do the, the testing and the lab analysis that was needed so somebody can look at that but as a geotechnical slopestability analysis background and see what type of repairs can be done a little more proactive. So that's something I just wanted to mention because it came up tonight and some of you may be interested in. It's outside of our project, but it's something we'll learn. Yeah. Uh, here's the plan. Again, this is the overall plan view that's on the um, board in the back. Uh, hard to see from that angle, but it just shows Interstate 79 is at the top the ramp to 79 northbound where we're adding that extra lane that you can see it's kind of, you can almost call it an express lane to 79 that's outside of the uh, signal on Miller's Run and uh, Washington Pike. And then the other improvements that I mentioned, the left turn lane into the uh, crossings of South Bayette and the through lane that continues on to Washington Pike. One thing I wanted to mention because they're a partner in this project and I think it really shows the private-public connection, how it works together well to make improvements within this area. What you see in a light green is actually going to be uh, worked on soon, if not this spring, this summer, by the Newberry Development. They're making improvements and adding dual left turn lanes. It's not part of this project, but we're going to connect to it uh, as part of what their improvement HOP is. So they're making improvements to the southern side of Washington Pike that will really work well in what we modeled with our traffic and our proposed improvements to work hand in hand with the improvements that are done to be done by the Blueberry Development. So I think it's a, a good example of PennDOT working with uh, the development to not only improve one leg of the intersection, but the whole intersection and it benefits everybody traveling through 
uh, the intersection, Miller's Run, and heading to 79 or heading to Bridgeville uh, in the project area. So that'll have a uh, great impact and improve the operations of that intersection and flow through the corridor as well. Here's just a blow up. I don't think I have to touch on this uh, too much, but it's just showing the extra lane on Chartier Street and the bridge as far as the different movements that I mentioned. And to give some perspective, there's the Midas, that's the intersection of Builders Run, Washington Pike, and that's the additional lane that's going to be heading up to the uh, northbound on ramp on Interstate 79. Okay, traffic control. Uh, hopefully, not a lot of you saw that detour and got really nervous. I want to put it in better context. It's something that would just be done over the course of one or two weekends. What we're planning on is to maintain traffic as it is during construction with some minor stoppages but some strict restrictions on the contractor during the peak hours and when schools in session or I guess the school peak, uh, peak hours and a lot of critical times during the day when that intersection has the heaviest volumes that they're not going to be able to restrict lanes and traffic on the, on the roadway. So that's going to be most of the long-term operations. However, we are reconstructing the bridge so there needs to be one weekend, two weekends, possibly a third weekend to construct some of the roadway improvements at Chartier Street. There are going to be weekends that we look at demolition or demolishing the bridge and then putting up the bridge one weekend using an accelerated bridge technique that would be the same width that it is today. So it wouldn't be any disruption to the lanes that people see today. Then the second weekend we finish the widening and complete the bridge. So at least two weekends will be a lot of advance notice and a lot of uh, warning in terms of when those weekends will be applied. And we try not to pick weekends, and that's where we ask some of the community leaders to help us out when there's an event or a festival or something else going on that we know will draw a lot of traffic. So we try to avoid those weekends, and we let the contractor know about it in our special provisions in the contract to you aren't allowed to do the restrictions on these uh, couple weekends if we know about them in advance. So on that, could be Right, that's a, a good point. Uh, a lot of the roadway work is going to be off-peak, not when uh, the peak hour of volumes in the morning or the afternoon when a lot of people are using the road. It's when the road isn't quite as busy as uh, Cheryl mentioned. But even on the weekends, too, we're going to encourage that within the, the schedule to get activities done where they may need to, to use the lane. Uh, not when there's the most amount of traffic on the roadway. And to do the work to widen the bridge, and what we say widening the abutments and the foundation, they'll do that off of the existing roadway to a, a fairly great extent. So they won't really have a need to be on the existing roadway other, to bring, other than to bring in some equipment and materials from time to time. So I think uh, BennDOT does a really good job of trying to minimize the disruption to traffic to the greatest extent possible, understanding that we still want to make progress uh, with the contract and not be too restrictive that it makes uh, it uh, not feasible to construct. So, okay. But uh, the detour basically is on 50 from the Collier Interchange, 79 to the Bridgeville Interchange. That kind of connects each side of 50. And again, and I know, and I'm from Pittsburgh too, I live in the South Hills, everybody has some kind of unofficial detours too that you can kind of get around the project area. This will be the Posted official detour that PennDOT uses for the weekends that we do need it to do uh, mainly the work on the bridge and maybe some of the approach tying roadway work too. And another thing that we'd like to hear maybe on the comment form or if you talk to a team member afterwards, this would be very helpful. We know a lot of people just from being in the project area use the bridge uh, to walk from one side to the other, and it's very difficult to find another crossing within the immediate area. So what PennDOT wants to do, kind of an out-of-the-box idea, uh, during the times that they would have a weekend detour, they still want to maintain this access to the greatest extent possible. So we're looking at potentially having shuttles pick up people at certain times or a certain interval and take them from the one side of the bridge safely to the other side. So nobody's trying to go through a uh, dangerous or not even allowed to go through the work zone, but that access, it could be so important to some people to walk to work or to walk to stores will still be there. It'll be a little longer, but that access would be provided in a safe shuttle service that would have a location on um, the church side of the bridge and go to the uh, Miller's Run side of the bridge. So that's something that we're looking at implementing in construction. So if you have any thoughts on that, if you think it's a good idea, a bad idea, 
uh, or maybe another idea. We'd definitely like to hear about that in the comment form. Okay, now the schedule, hopefully everybody's, this is kind of the ending point, but the, the schedule, uh, again, we wanted to recognize and thank the hard work throughout 50 task force is completed. They gave us a really good preliminary design that we could take and refine and really be, I think, uh, further ahead than we typically are during preliminary engineering. So thank a lot of you that are out there today on the Route 50 task force. Preliminary engineering, we're looking at finalizing the environmental document in a couple months and uh, moving into final design, where there's going to be more activities. You'll see in terms of geotechnical testing, drilling, uh, some of the minor property uh, takes that we'll need. Uh, people will be starting, we'll be looking right away plans, we'll be looking at finalizing our plans for construction. And utility relocations too, because I think the right away is very minor, and that's a good part about the project. Utility relocations over this type of crossing, it's going to be a little more significant, but we started those discussions already, and we have a lot of good people on the utility side that we're working with, so it's something we'll have to work through in the upcoming months and hopefully have a proactive plan to get the utilities relocated in advance to the greatest extent possible. It'll make it easier for the contractor to build the proposed improvements. And that should all, oh wait, can we go back? Good. That should all end at the beginning of 2020. We're looking to advertise and let the project and begin construction in the summer of 2020. And because of the accelerated bridge construction and the weekend construction, we anticipate the actual physical construction being completed fairly quickly on the roadway. Uh, we haven't worked out the construction schedule yet. That will be kind of the next step as we look at how those details need to come together in final design. Again, the second part, well, the first part, please fill out the comment form, but the second part is please, if you have any questions, any thoughts, you want to talk about the hydraulics more, the traffic, the details, you're not sure about something on a plan, please see myself or any of the other team members that Cheryl introduced earlier in the night. And again, uh, thanks everybody for coming out. We really appreciate such uh, great attendance for this project. We're very excited to continue. Thank you.